Good morning. Today is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. My name is Steve Delano. I'm the pastor at the Mayville United Methodist Church in Campbellsport, First United Methodist Church, and we welcome you to our online worship. In my message today, we will look at how Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Please pray with me. Lord of hope and peace, we have come this day asking for your mercy. Grant us your pardon. We have come this day seeking peace in our lives. Grant us peace. Teach us how to be compassionate disciples for you. For we ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Our opening hymn today is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. This was written by Joseph M. Scriven. Let us sing together. Our New Testament reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. So he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me, the door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will you give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those 
who ask him. The Lord's Prayer is a beautiful and powerful prayer. Jesus gets to the point and makes it even elegant. It's one of my favorite parts of any worship service. When I hear it sung, it moves me. Chills will even run up my spine. The Lord's Prayer is part of who we are as Christians. In this prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples, he uses some very powerful and vigorous verbs to help convey his meaning. The words hallowed, come, give, forgive, and bring are not passive words, but to the contrary. They move us to change. They move us to do something more. When we say to God, hallowed be thy name, we are doing so with the greatest praise and honor that we can convey. We are proclaiming that our God is hallowed. Our God is holy. Our God is revered and is set apart from all else. The second action verb, come, in the phrase, thy kingdom come, is also compelling. We are acknowledging God's kingdom and that we desire to be a part of fulfilling God's kingdom here on earth. We want God's kingdom to come here, to come right now, and we're help, willing to help make it happen in our everyday lives. When we pray, give us our daily bread, we are more than asking God for food and sustenance. We're acknowledging that we cannot do everything on our own, and we're truly demanding God's help. That help is in sustaining us with all that we need for life. We are asking God to give. Our God, who has already given his Son the bread of life, yet we know that we need more. Forgive is the fourth powerful verb that Jesus uses in this prayer. As Christians, we accept that Jesus atoned for our sins, that Jesus died for our sins. Yet Jesus knows that, as, just as we know, that we continually need to be forgiven. And just as importantly, that to love our neighbors we too need to be able to forgive. Finally, Jesus tells us to pray that we not be brought into the time of trial, meaning do not bring us into temptation. Jesus wants us to pray to God that we might avoid evil. This prayer that Jesus taught his disciples are the words that I often turn to when I pray. While I was in the Holy Land, on several occasions, when I was at a holy site, I would sit silently and say the Lord's Prayer. It was deeply meaningful to use Jesus' words in places that I know Jesus had walked and prayed himself. After teaching his followers to pray, Jesus tells the disciples two stories. These stories emphasize the first word of Jesus' prayer, Father. Jesus is telling his disciples and us that God is our Father. Jesus wants to make it clear that God will take care of us and provide for us. The first story tells of a man who goes to a friend's house to get bread to feed another friend who has just dropped by to visit. It is late at night and the friend has already locked up his house and he and his family are in bed. The friend tries to turn him away, but the man remains persistent. In the end, the friend gets up and gives him some bread. 
Now this story might seem a bit odd to us, as we would be able to run down to the grocery store or a fast food restaurant, or if it was really late, to a convenience store to get some more food. Yet the man demands from his neighbor, and he eventually gets it because he doesn't give up. Jesus sums up this story with the point he is making in verses 9 and 10, saying, Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. The point being that if the reluctant friend responds to the man's request, how much more will God respond? Our God who is anxious to meet our needs. The second story that Jesus tells us is about interactions between a father and his child. He asks them if a child asks for a fish, would you give them a snake? Or if a child asks for an egg, would you give them a scorpion? Of course not. A good father would not give his child something evil. Again, Jesus is returning to God the Father, whose graciousness is realized in providing what is needed, and in actuality, providing far more than what is reasonably expected. At coffee hour a week or so ago, we were discussing the Lord's Prayer and what it means to each of us. This discussion led to the question being raised about people finding Christ just before they die. Does this really happen? Can someone be without Christ, without God their entire life, and then on their deathbed come to the realization that they need God? I think so. I'm reminded of Jesus on Calvary. Jesus was on the cross with a convicted thief at each side. One thief mocked Jesus, yet the other came to believe that Jesus was the Son of God, the Messiah, his Savior. Remember, Jesus welcomed him into his kingdom. Our God is a loving and welcoming God. Our God gives us out of his abundance, out of his never-ending love and grace. Friends, I encourage you to take time this week and reflect on Jesus's prayer from Luke chapter 11, verses two through four. Take time with this prayer and contemplate what it means to you possibly write it down in your own words. While we cannot rewrite the prayer to be more eloquent than Jesus' words, I have paraphrased his words to be possibly a bit more in the language that I would speak. I conclude with my prayer. Please listen. Father, Holy is your name. I want to be a part of your kingdom on earth and to assist you in building it. Give me each day all that I need in life to do your will. Forgive me for my sins and help me to forgive those who have sinned against me. And merciful God, Guide me so that I will avoid and turn away from the evil in this world. Amen. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Loving and gracious God, we are in the midst of summer. We look forward to rest and recreation, but time is moving rapidly on and we still find ourselves stressed and weary we need to slow down we know this but yet we find this hard to do 
We load ourselves up with activities, stresses, duties, and then wonder how we will sur survive them. As you have found us before, Lord, find us again. Wrap your arms of compassion around us. Help us to savor the times that we have with each other and help us to rejoice for all that we have due to your love and grace. Merciful and forgiving God, we do not always respond to difficulties with love, but rather with impatience. We at times turn our backs on others in need, placing our creature comforts first. We have been stressed, pulled, pushed, and tossed. Give us peace. Help us to slow down so that we can receive your healing word of love. Remind us that we stand in need of forgiveness. And then having received such love, we are to love and serve others. Teach us to pray for courage and strength. Teach us how to be good disciples. Healing and comforting God, we come to you with our pain, our illnesses, and our sorrows. We look to you for your healing love and your never-ending comfort. Lift us up with courage, peace, and strength that only you can provide. Almighty God, make us keenly aware of the magnificence of this world. Draw us to the times of peace and rest. Give us strength, courage, and joy that we might become disciples who are worthy of your kingdom. For we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you for worshiping with us today. Please receive the benediction. Beloved of God, you have been healed and forgiven. God has poured his love upon you that you may be faithful disciples, offering healing love and forgiveness to all. Go in peace, and may God's peace always be with you. Amen. Thank you.